Ladies and gents, the breeding formula in Pal World has finally been uncovered. And yes, it's finally possible to get your most desired choice, the perfect pal you always dreamed of. But there are a few more mechanics that go way beyond that. And this is going to help you even make use of pals long forgotten in your pal deck, but that might have some amazing stats you can eventually breed into some amazing new results. So this is all because of this amazing thread right here on the Pal World subreddit by the user Blahibel. I hope that I pronounced that correctly, but essentially it's a data mine of how exactly the game calculates which breed comes out of which breed when you combine certain types of pals. And there are over 19,000 possible breeding results, which is kind of daunting when you think about it, but not so much when you actually have the formula. But long story short, the game uses what's essentially an internal breeding power. This is a secret power, a number between 10 and 1500 that every single pal has. You cannot see this, but the game uses this to come up with the results you always see. And the lower that number is, it means that the more rare or more powerful the pal is. For example, a creature like Anubis has an internal power of 570 and somebody like Ativa has like 1460, essentially being much, much weaker. So this is the formula that the game uses right here. It's actually pretty straightforward and simple. It combines the power of both of the parents. It adds plus one to it and then divides the whole result by two, giving you that average baby power. In case it's not a whole number, the game also rounds that down to the nearest whole number as well. Now from this point on, if that number happens to fall right in between two possible results, like in this case combining an Anubis of 570 power and the Kativa of 1460, it gives you 1015, which essentially puts you right in between a Falbet at 1010 and the Robin Quill at 1020. So how does the game decide which one of these gets picked over the other? Well, whichever comes first in the game's file index. In this case, the user determined that it was the Robin Quill that came first in that game file list, so it got picked over the Falbat. And finally, probably the most interesting mechanic is that whichever breeds you use, you can never get an offspring that's stronger slash more rare than its strongest slash rarest parents. That's why you can't just breed a bunch of Kativas and Chickpeas and work your way up to the Anubis. It's not going to work like that, it just averages it out. Plus, you're still forced to go out in the wild, explore and capture these actively, especially for the more rare and high level pals. But this also raises an interesting question. The other day, we were able to actually breed an Anubis from two low level pals. This included the Pen King and the Bushi, which I think we can all agree they are somewhat weaker than the Anubis. So what the heck is going on over here? Well, essentially, it's the game attributing internal numbers lower the Pen King compared to the Anubis, plus the Bushi is not too far off. So for example, the Pen King gets something like 520, which in theory means the Pen King is also more rare compared to the Anubis and in theory also stronger. And the Bushi is not too far off either. It's 640. So when you add all of this into that formula, you get 580. So this gets rounded down eventually to getting us Anubis, which sits at 570. That doesn't actually mean in a game when we factor in pure combat that Panking or Bushi are better than Anubis. In fact, I would say that once you fully build them and upgrade them, they might be quite close to one another. It's just that the game gave that Panking a lower internal number. So this is the result that ends up when you combine it with the Bushi, also a very low slash rare number. Of course, if you enjoyed the video up until now, a sub to the channel would absolutely be amazing. But with that out of the way, it's time to go over a few examples right here. So uh, let's talk about this website. There are actually quite a few websites that have started popping up, but I'm just going to post some links down below you can follow because it just takes the same spreadsheet. However, it gives it in a more comprehensive kind of layout. So the one that I usually use is this. It gives you a few ways to search as well as use your current pals for the best possible breed outcomes. So I suggest starting with the search result oriented. In this case, it's going to let you just search for that specific pal you need, like for example, Anubis. And this is going to give you all the possible currently known um, breeds or breed combinations that will achieve an Anubis. And yes, Pan King and Bushi is one of them too. We were lucky to actually find this out, but there are many, many more that can include a whole bunch of other creatures, both 
lower and higher level again they will have to give that average number of 570 or close to that to be an anubis so even a something like a rush board can be used as long as you go with something super high level like a blasphemous or a suzaku aqua and there are many more examples in here but in my case i also wanted to go ahead and use something like a ragnarok i wanted to breed this and see which of these possible combinations could i use depending on the ones i had already captured and there were quite a few that worked for me and i noticed that a lot of night wings actually enter into this formula and it doesn't seem to need anything too high of a level and elisa b was probably one of the best possible options for here however technically there is one earlier than that which was the quivern at around level 23 so that can actually give you this um, ragnarok at around level 23 if you play the game and capture both of these but in the case of my nightwing which was a shiny variant and the elizabe which had some amazing stats this was the obvious choice for me so this is what i also recommend you do whenever you look at these also pay attention to the actual passive skills your existing pals have because you might just have a slightly higher level option that might give you much much better results now another even more powerful tool is the parent oriented search again it does not matter if it's parent one or two the order of the parents does not matter just pick parent one and then type in the name of whichever maybe even low level pal you might have but a pal that comes with some very good passive skills on it to give you an example, I had a lot of Fox Sparks, and a lot of them came in with some amazing passive skills, like having Muscle Head, Lucky, and Vicious on the same freaking pal. So I wanted to see what can I breed this with and get something that's actually currently meta. So what I noticed is that Fox Spark can result in a number of Lunarises with a ton of these parents to combinations. So if I were to combine it with a Chillet, or maybe even with a Kitsune, or maybe even with a Dinosum and Dinosum Lux, I could get a Lunaris, which is currently a top tier, at least considered top tier kind of pal. So in this case, I combine it with a Kitsune, which I also found randomly. It just happened to be of a much better quality compared to something like my Dinosum. So I combine it with that, but I could have achieved that Lunaris even sooner with the Dinosum and Fox Park because technically they are both in the starting location. So we found out a way to get Lunaris way, way sooner, even compared to the one we already talked about a couple of days back. And in this case, the result can be really amazing, but again, it's a little bit RNG dependent. I do want to make a special mention here for the tower bosses because I just know a lot of you captured them while they don't fall into the same equation as their default models. Let me give you an example. If you were to combine a Mozarina and a Lyleen, this would normally give you an Anubis. But if you use the Lyleen tower boss, it's not going to give you that because the internal number of the Lyleen tower boss is different than the Lyleen you find out in the wild. So in this case, even though I did combine a Mozarina with the Lyleen tower boss I captured using that trick, it only gave me some random chickpeas, so nowhere near close to the Anubis. That is because these tower bosses have their own different numbers. You can still use their default, for example, PAL variants to boost their powers and ranks up, but this is not going to work for the breeding process. I just wanted to let you guys know. I went of course ahead and tested a bunch of other stuff out so others that i also suggest is the war sack you can actually achieve this very early relatively with a sweeper a level 11 essentially and the relaxorus which is only a level 20 or so both of which you can find relatively early and you can get this really powerful beast it also boosts your own attacks by the way with fire and on top of the fact that it's a very strong top tier choice right now there are others in too, like for example, we talked about the fact that Rayhound can enter in a bunch of very, very strong combinations. So let's say, for example, that, I don't know, you have you want something like a Dinosum Lux, or maybe you want something like um, even a Grisbolt, but don't have the time to capture the one in the south. You can combine that with a Mosanda, but you can create one of these Rayhounds by simply using a Nightwing and a Dire Hall. Again, very low level types of creatures you can find straight into the starting area 
Outside of that, gender doesn't really matter at all in this case. You can just combine whichever model you want with whichever breed and then just get the result. It's always going to be the same no matter if it's a male or female or the other way around. There is, however, a gender, um, well, specific kind of drop rate here. So certain pals do have a higher probability to be either male or female. For example, King Paka has a 90% chance to be a male, but in the case of the Elizabeth, it's a 10% chance to be a male. However, in my case, I managed to only get male Elizabeth bees for some reason so that's my luck on top of this there's also a list of 28 special combinations that don't use the breeding power method and instead give you a predetermined result for example i bred away something like a pyrin and a catrice so it's always going to be a pyrin knocked and there are many others in there too like suzaku and yormuntide is always going to be a suzaku aqua and all of these results right here basically those base versions but with a completely new element so maybe if it was fire now it's ice or water or even darkness it's just something you can see in this list right here and besides this the final final one is that there are five legendary pals that cannot be born from anything else below them you actually have to capture these and then breed them like that so for example if you want for stallion the dragon palladius necromus and your dignis you're going to have to go ahead and capture these get a male and female and only then you can breed their offsprings again and do this continuously you cannot breed from below them but yeah, that pretty much concludes today's video. As always, if you enjoyed it, then a like and a sub would be appreciated. If you did not enjoy it and hated it, then just leave a dislike and comment your frustrations down below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.